loud. There we go. Okay, and away Mark goes. Okay, so someone will be my mediator for questions. Uh, hop online. Yeah. Okay. Who wants to try to watch the chat? Hello, you want to hear me? All right, good. All right, so my name's. Uh, well, this today's presentation is on on zero trust and improving web application security. Uh, you know, my name is Mark Spears. I'm a principal consultant over at Solus Security. Uh, a little bit about Solus is uh, we are, you know, a local uh, security firm here. Uh, we do everything from virtual CISO to compliance to risk assessments of all kinds. We have an, an offsec uh, offshoot. Uh, we do just about everything. We even have a huge incident response department and a business resumption department. We handle quite a bit of the North American claims under our other brand called CFC Response. Uh, we're actually a wholly owned subsidiary of CFC, the insurance company. Yeah. So I will be your presenter. So there's my LinkedIn up there. Uh, you can catch me at either one of those two emails. You know, I've got 20, I think kind of almost 25 years now in software development where I started. Uh, then I moved on to building a piece of software that lasted for 13 years as a, as a credit card and ACH gateway. Uh, while I was doing that, this thing called PCI came out. You guys might have heard of that. Uh, and a lot of us weren't really security guys before then, but we got kind of smacked with level one PCI compliance. And th hence our security career was born because it had to be. Uh, so uh, I do penetration testing, compliance, cyber security. I, I do the whole gamut as a principal. Uh, you know, I've been CISO. I'm a virtual CISO for a lot of companies out there. Um, you know, I work with companies on their secure uh, SDLC and shift left. Uh, I play the role of our chief zero trust officer. And if my company's listening, it's not official, but like it's kind of what I do around uh, evangelizing. Um, I work with the incident response and business resumption teams, specifically around web application uh, compromises and helping recover data from DDoS attacks and, and helping mitigate and prepare for, for those and credential stuffing type stuff. Um, I help people get their WAF set up and configured. And, you know, that's kind of like an ABC process where you kind of, you move into this and, you, you know, is this, this is better than you had. Sometimes companies need a better posture. So uh, we help out with that a lot. Um, I do OWASP training, obviously. Uh, and I, I do a lot of stuff with like the ASVS and the MASVS, which are two great OWASP uh, projects for application security verification standard. And the mobile one as well. Uh, yeah, and they're actually amazingly kept up to date. You know, especially the mobile one because that world tends to change every three minutes, right? So, um, I like the hardware hack. We got some stuff on the side over here, uh, compliances and, and whatnot. So, uh, you can check us out. Uh, you know, so my career is kind of interesting because I, I get to work on the insurance claim side of the house, and I get to work on the proactive security side of the house. So a lot of these things I'm talking about are very near and dear to my heart because companies come to us on the claim side and it is the worst day of their life. They made some, some either kid mistakes or some big mistakes and they didn't fund certain things and they thought, well, it's not going to happen to me. And then it happens to them. And, and it, it's absolutely crushing the stories that we hear. And so, you know, luckily the good part of my job is we get to help them get to a better place. And it, it, it's definitely a rewarding thing to see a company come out of that and recover well. On the proactive side, we help them not go back into that claim phase again, you know, uh, as best as we can. Uh, so, you know, because we see a lot of the, the, the North American insurance claims, when we talk about things, I'm, I'm talking from absolute experience, you know, of, of seeing these type of breaches happen that we have to kind of protect against. You know, a lot of times in proactive security, we're guessing. What's great about Solace is we're, we're not guessing because we saw the claim come in. We know exactly who the bad actors are, what they're doing, their MOs. We have an entire counter threat intelligence team that goes over and, and, and kind of has dossiers on these different groups. And we got people in the dark web looking for caches of data that could be our, our, our customers that we can keep them out of, out of that claim or that ransomware before it happens. So we, mainly we do ransomwares and BECs. It's probably the, the main part of our, our 
claim part of our business. So, or claim resolution. Today, I want to give you guys a short primer on Zero Twist. Uh, you know, I want to talk about set up a configuration of, of uh, Cloudflare. Uh, I want to talk about exposing zero, you know, internal websites that you may have had WAFed, but maybe they didn't be WAFed or publicly exposed. And you could have provided a different way to secure these internal efforts your team is building uh, in a more secure way, or even adding MFA to sites that weren't MFAable before. And these are all important topics, right? Very important topics, uh, you know, because when you talk about like not getting into ransomware, like the top things are MFA everywhere, right? The top things are vulnerability patching at all costs, right? Uh, you know, and, and there's just some things in there that, that will help almost keep you, I can't say claim proof, but, or, or ransomware proof, but anyone here been ransomware before their company? No? What about BEC compromises that led to a large loss of financial data? No? Good. We're talking to some people who hopefully are locked down very good. Uh, then let's talk about developer access and code security. Uh, we'll talk about WAF. You know, and third-party access, which is always kind of a pain. Uh, anyone here at Admin, you got that one vendor who's got to come in on a Saturday, and you have to, like, log in and enable their access? Those days are over for you now. So, all right. So, a short primer on Zero Trust. So, I ask a lot of people what Zero Trust is, and they, they always give me that look, like, oh, Zero Trust means we don't trust anybody. Yeah, great, Sherlock. You know, but, like, it's a, it's a lot more than that. And it's become something very important. It's sort of my, my path about a year and a half ago. So the evolution of zero trust. So in 2010, Forrester Research coined the term, right? Uh, you know, never trust, always verify. 2017, Gardner was toying with the same thing, uh, the, same, the same idea type, but they called it CARTA, you know, Continuous Adaptive Risk and Trust Assessment, right? Uh, and it was supposed to be the same thing. 2019, Garner came back, a different analyst, and he'd been working with this stuff for a while. And then he came back looking at Carta and the, remember that thing called software defined perimeter, right? It's kind of a buzzword for a while. Uh, and that was a buzzword. Uh, the, uh, but he came back with zero trust network access, right? Uh, 2021, President Biden gave a, a speech where he specifically mentioned the federal and the FCBE branches starting to move towards zero trust. And he called it out by name, right? So very important. 2021, later in that year, CISA.gov, uh, you know, which is our, our federal uh, you know, security, uh, they came out and based on Biden's requirements, he came out, they came out with a first list of what zero trust should be uh, in, in uh, June. And then in April, it went to the public. And then in 2021, or I'm sorry, 2022, they just released uh, the version two of that security model. So actually, um, my dates are wrong. In 2023, they released version two of that. So uh, you can follow this along the news. So what is zero trust? So there's actually definitions out there. And if you guys take anything away from today, please understand it is you know, a, a security framework, right? It, it's new. You know, it's, it's not really that new. It's just a different way of looking at things. So NIST has a publication, 800-207, that actually gives the definition, you know, of zero trust being a collection of concepts and ideas designed to minimize uncertainty in enforcing accurate least privilege per request access decisions in information systems and services in the face of a network viewed as compromised. And we are supposed to always assume our network's compromised. That's kind of why that statement's there. ZTA is zero trust architecture, and that's an enterprise's cybersecurity plan that uses zero trust concepts and encompasses component relationships, workflow planning, and access policies. As our own company implemented zero trust, we had some software devs of things that we release to the public for incident response and other threat information sharing. And, you know, me and the team had to kind of come together because they built it one way, but it really could have been zero trusted a little better. So we're actually working more cross department 
on how to better deploy solutions within the zero trust architecture. So, so zero trust is the network infrastructure, uh, zero trust enterprise is the network infrastructure, physical and virtual and operational policies. And I'm not just talking written policies. You should have those as well. They should meet up with your, your policies, but the policies are generally wrote online by any kind of framework. So within the software, all right, so there's a NIST publication link for everybody. I'll make sure Kyle and Kate have the slides after we're done. So the zero trust maturity model, this came from CISA.gov. And it's got five pillars in here, right? We've got identity devices, networks, we got applications and workloads, and we have data. And then across that, we also have uh, these other pieces of strengthen up as you mature in those processes of your governance, automation, orchestration and visibility and analytics. So, and you can see across the pillars, we start with traditional, we go to initial, advanced, and then optimal. Where you go is up to you. But you know, if, you don't, if you're not a federal agency, this was released for anybody to use, right? And just like Tim, when I help companies and they don't have any compliance they have to fit in, sometimes I'll, I'll choose the CIS top 18 and say, look, you know, which ones of these are you going to do? Which ones aren't you going to do? Which ones do you have now? And kind of gap that out with them. And the same thing can apply here. This is a full list of the, of the kind of controls as you mature through the process. Uh, you know, and you know, I, I want to look at a couple of these. And you can see that these are kind of a maturity along the way. Right, so traditionally we do passwords or MFA across the top, and then we'll do MFA with passwords, right, would be your initial move. And then you would move on to phishing resistant MFA. So, you know, it's, a lot of these things are, are very iterative in the process. And can, just like CS Top 18, you know, where you can kind of choose what you want to do and aren't going to do, I recommend you kind of look at it and do that as well. So, the zero trust maturity model, uh, you know, it, it is based on a couple of things of, of not putting all your eggs in a basket at one time. This is not something you're going to transform overnight. There are things that you guys can take advantage of now, and there's things you can't take advantage of now that would require some cross-border communication with different departments of your company. So, but it's good to begin with the risk assessment with anything. You know, find out what your quick wins are, what your gaps are, timeline the things you want to get to, and start that process. So, in fact, I'm going to say Cloudflare a few times in this talk. They actually talked in one of their blog articles about creating even a temporary position in companies called the Chief Zero Trust Officer. You know, who would be the one who evangelizes this, the company, does a lot of the research, helps bring this around to to fruition. So, and again, a lot of this means you have to talk across departments. So there's two important things in blue here I want to you know, talk about is the path to zero trust is an incremental process. Don't try to do it overnight. Uh, you know, it may take you years to get to where you want to be, and that's fine. The larger the, the, the chess piece that you guys may be, the, the harder it may, may be. So, and then the CISA zero trust maturity model is one of many paths that you can be looking at. You know, if you're not a federal agency, you don't have to follow that one. You know, and there's several options out there. So here's a list of a lot of the vendors that are providing some pieces of zero trust. There's more out there, but th these are just a lot of big names. You'll see Splunk, Cato, Okta, Ubico, SolarWinds, Akamai. I mean, it, it's going to, you're gonna piece your own pieces together you're going to mix and match. And you may decide on doing some kind of, you know, hey, this vendor has like 85% of what I need, but I need these other vendors as well, right? So not one vendor has all the solutions, but a few are close. When I was at Black Hat last year in Def Con, I specifically went looking around, not just for all the t-shirts, which I do on the first day of Black Hat, to feed my closet, but I went to go look to see how many vendors were doing zero trust. And I saw there's again, a few that were kind of, they had two, three pieces. A lot only had one 
maybe two, and a few of them, and it's a very small number, have like three or four of the pieces, you know, of what you need. So looking at that and how this works with your company is kind of an important thing. And I don't recommend you necessarily go it alone unless you have the long haul to do this in. Uh, and yeah, OWASP is on the list because you have to have threat intelligence feeds and keep up to date on things. So very important. So Cloudflare released something called their Zero Trust Roadmap, right? And, and they, they, they took that from the federal guidelines and they said, hey, this is, this is what we do. And believe it or not, all those vendors on there, I got from Cloudflare, they, as true to their form, they don't say we're your only solution. They point to other people like Zscaler, who are their big competitors. They're very fair about that. So, but the big thing they go after is the users, endpoints and devices, networks, applications, SaaS applications, and DLP logging, and then what they call a steady state, where you want to be and where you want to stay. So there's a little diagram there on the right. So the biggest thing you're going to see is on the user side, establish a corporate identity, right? That, that's the first big hurdle to cloud, but to any zero trust, whether that's Active Directory, Okta, whatever vendor you want to use, you know, one login, whoever, you need to have some kind of uh, structure there. So you can actually start implementing MFA. And at the beginning, Zero Trust, if you read the framework, talks about starting to consolidate those, right? Uh, as, as you go along, uh, and you may not be able to get all of them into one, but uh, you can go to zerotrustroadmap.org and you can kind of read through their implementation with their, their, their guidance. So a little about Cloudflare, why did I choose them for my talk and why do I use them a lot? Uh, so number one, they gave us swag, right? To give out to you guys. So uh, they're, you know, they're actually, they're a global network and I was very impressed with them. I went to a zero trust. Uh, they had a, like a free open zero trust day where we went for a lab and they, they taught us all the concepts of zero trust. It was an amazing day because I, I was like everyone else. Uh, I don't know what zero trust means, but I'm going to spend a day with them and learn it, right? So I was just very impressed with their organization and how they put themselves together. Uh, you know, and believe it or not, they started as a honeypot in 2004. You know, and then they kind of grew from that. Uh, in the, the print. We all know them as a WAF company, right? How many guys use Cloudflare for a WAF? Yeah. I, yeah. See, I mean... They're, 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 they're a top-notch WAF vendor, right? So uh, they're publicly traded, and they have a hub right here in Austin. So I can go right down the street and go talk to people if I need to. Uh, they're in the Littlefield building for 500. Feel free to stop by. Uh, so the services, the other thing that I was impressed with is they built them for large and small. Like, I can go to a very large company or a very, like, Dave's carpet shop, and I can fit them into the model of Cloudflare regardless. They call themselves Lego blocks. You know, you, you build them, but they provide the blocks. So, and, you know, they provide not just the application services that we know, but they have developer services now. Uh, they're providing pages and uh, API shields and all sorts of new stuff. Uh, the Zero Trust is something that's kind of really new. Uh, and the, their network services. And they're about to start offering firewalls as a service. Uh, and doing a lot of stuff with, with SASE. So uh, they have a global presence. You know, another thing I liked about them, I chose them as my vendor. And cho choose your own. I'm not trying to influence anybody. But when I did my homework, they've got, you know, they move about one third of the internet's traffic, believe it or not. Uh, and they block 70 billion threats per day. Uh, their compliance and privacy is built in. And their data, they're, they're, they're cloud vendor agnostic. So if, if one vendor goes down, I'm not stuck with just the, oh shoot, remember that DIN outage? You know, well, Cloudflare just moved brought you somewhere else, you know, and, and you'd still be online. So I like that about them. Um, and then they're also built on Unicast, which means every server, every service, and every data center does everything. So total redundancy. Uh, and their their downtime's been super low. Um, this is their, their zero trust plan, you know, and you can go to the link at the bottom and go check them out. They give this away for zero trust for 50 users for free. Like 
if I want to go sell Cloudflare, they're my own, they're my own worst enemy, right? So, uh, all joking aside, uh, you know, but they, they sell it, but, you know, they, and they support it, but they won't build it for you. So uh, there, there's, there, there's room for people out there. So uh, there's pay-as-you-go plans, there's contract plans, and it's not expensive, you know. Uh, you know, it's not expensive at all to start with a team of 50 and say, we're going to start these people right here and start doing something. And you can do it online and be up and running in five minutes. They're, these are their big pieces of zero trust that they've built. Okay? They have the, the ZTNA or the Zero Trust Network Access, which is generally a browser-based access in your company. Um, I could do SSH in the browser. I can do VNC in the browser. I can do websites in the browser and expose them without messing with my internal VPN services, which tend to sometimes be weak or overcrowded. So this, this brings you a, a new method. Secure Web Gateway is kind of the competitor to Cisco Umbrella that we're all used to, uh, where I can do DNS filtering. If I turned on proxy, you know, I'll get into that a little bit. Uh, screw me, just saying that you're DNS. Remote browser isolation, that's very cool. A lot of companies are pixel pushing in this marketplace. They're actually redrawing the entire screen. So, you know, because pixel pushing is kind of expensive. Uh, the Cloud Access Security Broker kind of tells you who's going where. Right, it helps you determine if you want people going there and you can write rules to not let them go there. But they have a whole thing on shadow IT when we set this up. Cloud email security, they kind of stuff that in as their own deal. Uh, they just bought a company called Area One Security. Uh, they, they were a vendor of Cloudflares and then the president realized he had no spam for like the last three weeks. And he said, well, where's my spam? They said, well, we just got Area One Security. He, and they're, they're like one of their big wigs said, buy them. And they did. And now they're a part of Cloudflare. Um, and their DLP is really good. Like uh, they use Intel 471 on the backside of that. And they will go actually, they, they license that. You don't have to pay anything. And they will go look into your zip files and, and, and into your sites. And you can get feedback on, on malware coming through on the backside. So we'll get some demos here shortly. Uh, set up configuration. How am I in time? Where's my time? I got 20 minutes left. <laughs> All right. So there's three ways can I get started. Method one is you go to the sign up page. Method two is you go to the plan page and hit, hit sign up. Method three is you call, it, oh, thank you, an enterprise customer of theirs or someone like ourselves that can help you get set up. You don't have to use us, but if you like me, maybe you want to use me. So um, gratuitous plug. So, uh, it's not easy to go alone on this stuff, but you know, there's, you know, they will not set this up for you. But if someone, if you get the firm who's already been down this process, they can help you map this out, help you with your dApps. It's not rocket science. Everyone, I took a company the other day from having no zero trust and they had, they needed access to one server for RDP and they had, and they were an insurance claim and they got hit by having RDP open to the web to their main server, right? And, you can't secure RDP. It's just no. And so the uh, was public. And so I took them within an hour and a half, including all of my lengthy commentary from no zero trust to them having access to that RD, uh, RDP access to their main server within an hour and a half. And they were like, wow, that was very impressive, right? And, and it, saw, it saved the solution. They were like a 12 person company. And they got the free plan of cloud player, didn't matter to them all. So, um, so configuration in general, and I'll share these screens here in a second. Yeah, I got some screenshots. So you're gonna set up a team domain. They give everybody a, uh, a, a, like a launch page that's, that's .cloudflareaccess.com. So ours is like solacecurity.cloudflareaccess.com. You choose your own. Uh, you can uh, do a block page, uh, login page customization, your, your logos and colors. Uh, you can do some terraforming. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun. And then the block page, you can actually say where, where people should call for support. Because when you start adding on some of these like blocking things, like we don't want people going here, but someone needs to go there, they need a, a way to find out who blocked them. So uh, under configuration, and we talked about this a second ago, having like a root architecture for where your users' stores are at. It is very important. So you can choose any of these authentication methods and multiples of them. That's pretty impressive. You know, 
of, of a list, right? So in fact, if you have Azure AD with MFA, like when you set this up, you'd have Azure AD with MFA for any site you want to put behind this. So uh, very, very cool. And they're, they're adding more all the time. So uh, again, the identity store, you know, the, the rule says, and this is the optimal rule, agency securely integrates their identity stores across all partners and environments as appropriate. You see, you can add SAML for partners. Yeah, it's all there. Uh, on the app launcher, a couple of things I'm going to point out before I show them online is on, under authentication, uh, you know, you can set these rules for the app launcher and what login methods you want to allow. And then you can choose them per, per login. The, on the right side of the screen, when you make rules, the rules will include an action. You can say, I want to include certain things. Uh, then I'm going to come over here and say, yeah. So when you do your policies, you can say emails, emails end again, IP ranges, countries, and you can string those together with, with different policies for different groups of people. Kind of really cool, you know? And on the identity stuff on the optimal, it talks about agencies determining identity risk in real time based on continuous analysis and dynamic rules. You can make dynamic rules out of these things all day, right? So uh, then we talk about access management, you know, use automation to authorize just in time and just enough access. So interesting. So we're going to talk for a second about exposing internal websites securely with MFA. So this is a traditional concept. We've got websites behind the firewall. We have websites that are exposed in front of the firewall. You know, in this case, sometimes we all love our FortiGates. Some of us may hate them. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I see a lot of companies leaving their firewall, their, their firewall login in front of their firewall for their management page. Because what if the admin's on vacation? What if the VPN goes down? Right. And then they're like, shh, there's nothing here to see. Right. So, but we got stuff we want to get to that's behind this. So this is an absolute roadmap to ransomware. Because like a lot of these things maybe don't have lockout thresholds and things of that nature, right? Del People are running Dell Sonic Walls. They were running Dell Sonic Walls? No? So we're in an enterprise class group here. So, all right. But so, and these things, you know, they, they're opening up RDP, web and SSH ports. Uh, it, it's just very threatening, right? So, and the VPN service can go down, right? Yeah, that, that's a choke point for a lot of companies. And a high availability, that's even more money. So on the zero trust network access side, the new concept is a SASE, right? Uh, your, your secure edge. So in this diagram, the actor or your employee or a remote worker would go into this browser. Uh, you, you have public DNS C names that are going to tie into Cloudflare. And that would turn around and give them SSH access in the browser, which is kind of amazing the first time you see it, uh, give them web-based VNC in the browser. Everyone, the first time you see it, it's like, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe this. Um, but the SASC is going to do your identity and it's going to do your policies to make sure when that person logs in that they have a, a proper token and the, and the session is expired and you can control a lot of that. So uh, and this is really, if we're talking WAF, we're talking reverse proxy. This is a forward proxy because inside your network, you're going to put this little thing in here. That's a tunnel, right? And that tunnel forward proxies the SASC. So when you go to Cloudflare, those, those public DNS names, they're going to actually point from the C name to Cloudflare SASC. And that's going to know where these are. And then we can expose all of these without them being directly online. So now no more ransomware roadmap. We're done. So the other thing I want to point out here is uh, these policies can include third-party justification. It's about those network admins. You got to let that guy have access on a, on, a, on a Sunday with his family. So you could turn this on and say, hey, um, I want purpose justification for this one user. And you, he'll have to put, a, the, the, they will receive like your prompt. They'll put their reason that they're needing this access. And then you can have these email addresses of approvers. So in my message, I say, hey, put in your justification and then call me. And then what will happen is once they hit the submit button, when they're trying to log into that site, it'll send me an email. I can look at my phone and I can give them access for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, four hours, and choose how long I want that guy on my network. Then I make him re-authenticate. 
kind of very cool. So, you know, the life cycles up there on the other side of the screen. So let's do a, a ZTNA kind of access and, and, and demo. Let me see if I can, uh, let me stop sharing for a second. And now I can share again. All right, so when we're looking at this, uh, uh, we, need, we need a Cloudflare. This is their normal site. Uh, I'm gonna go click on backwards here. And I'm gonna go to Zero Trust off their menu. So some of the settings you can see when you come into here, it's really quite easy. Uh, you know, you got an account with your payment methods. Uh, you have a general setup in here where we talked about the block page and customizing your login page and what what domain you want to use. So all that's super easy, right? Um, and then when we talk about setting up people inside of here, right? Um, I think back to my PowerPoint. Yeah, I want some tunnel. Okay, okay. So sorry, I was trying to make sure I got my stop sharing, go back to that. All right, so very easy setup on all these things. And then when you come back into here, there's also a setting for, for your authentication. And you, know, you, can, you can say, I don't want people getting on my app launcher, which would be your specific URL. And these are my login methods I've got set up in there. And their documentation is really good. So uh, to look at that. So I can go in here and see my login methods. I can go test it. I can go edit my Azure AD settings uh, and do all those things. So when we talked about the diagram where we were exposing on inside the internet or things that are internal to the internet. So we, that would be called access in here. And we would create these tunnels, right? And I've got, believe it or not, they do run on a Raspberry Pi. It's kind of funny, uh, but they do just fine for exposing websites. So and I can see if it's healthy or not. And you know, I've got these routes that, can, that it could actually use. Here we go command minus yeah so if i came into here and this is like uh, a raspberry pi tunnel that i have i got other ones that go into our line out environment but if i go look at those configure them you know it's when you make a new tunnel you it's as, as simple as creating a name for it choosing which environment you're going to use it for and then they give you instructions on how to install and run a connector done now you've got that component on the inside of your network doing that forward proxy back out to the SASE. And as long as things can connect to that, that connector in the office, you can expose them outside your network. No more VPN. So, uh, and you can lock it down a lot better than you can most VPNs. So you wouldn't have these things. So if I click on this one, uh, configure it, uh, there's things in here, like I got public host names that I'm exposing, right? Uh, and you can see that these are all like localhost 22. Here's my internal IPs. You can't get to them anyway because it's behind zero trust. So I believe I don't really mind. So the uh, and these are the public host names, right? So if I when I set these up, it'll automatically create a C name of the same record on my DNS, which is really quite amazing. So if I can. And then you can also route things internally privately if you want to, and that's a different conversation. So we create these, then we go create applications. You know, so I've got, uh, for example, I have a Cali box running VNC, right? So uh, kind of kind of kind of cool. So uh, you see, these some of these are self-hosted websites, some of these are browser VNC, some could be bookmarks, some are private networks. So. Let me just try to pull up uh, one of these real quick. I'm going to go to, I'm going to pull up, uh, which one? This, oh, let me go into the settings real quick. So I'm going to go to my, my Cali 2 VNC, um, go configure it. So these are the policies you have, whether it's web, SSH, or anything else. 
Uh, I got one called Mark Testing. It's only my Cali box. Uh, but if you go into here, I could uh, look at the policies, the authentication, and you know I've got either provider is acceptable. They give you a default one-time pin if you want to use that, which isn't the safest. But so where to start? So you add more enterprise things, um, and then you can even put if it's a website core settings for websites that could be necessary cookie settings. Um, and that was for VNC. So I go to my policy, go configure this guy. You can see that I've got uh, only my emails that I have I can access this. And then if I had a third party, I could even turn on this a different policy for someone else who might be pen testing for the day. Um, but you know, you can add these include, require, and exclude rules. So let's go look at a couple of these sites. I'm going to go pull up my dashboard. We move. Would you like to see the analytics? Very badly. Okay. So let me go. I'm going to hop for a second. This is actually a different part of the. Okay. So I'm going to go in. How do I get this browser piece? Ah, ha ha ha. Okay. So I'm going to go to my site, um, which is solacesecurity.cloudforaccess.com. I could access any of those C names directly. But they also provide you the ability to have a launch page so people can log in and know what they have access to, which is kind of very cool. So let me see if I can make this a little smaller. All right. So if I say this, this is, you know, this one doesn't have anything. So I go to log in. Now I got my customized login screen. I can log in via Azure AD or this one time pin. Uh, but I mean, it, one time pins more for your third party vendors who may not be integrated in your environment to me. So I'm going to click on Azure AD. I may or may not already have a token. Let's go see. I do. So it let me write in. Otherwise, would have done the Azure AD authentication. So this will, I have access to a lot of things here, right? Um, my Austin Fortigate, uh, you know, a couple of those, my Raspberry Pi tunnel, uh, Cali boxes, Drawdus. You guys like Drawdus? Cool reporting tool, I love it. All right, so uh, we got drawn us via the web and SSH. So here is my Kali MCP SSH, right? And so this is a Kali box, and I set up an SSH tunnel to it. So I'm going to open this in a new tab. And so I'm going to stop sharing for a second so I can grab that password so you guys don't see it. Uh, but it's going to be roots, submit. I'm going to stop sharing and grab that password. Uh, yes, sir. I wouldn't have it any other way. So hopefully my coworkers aren't. Hopefully my coworkers aren't online. I'm messing with my passwords right now. So that would be something they would totally do to me while I'm giving a presentation. Uh, let's go back to Zoom. Let's go back and share. Share. All right, so we're back on this screen here. So I'm going to put that password in there for root. Uh, now, you could do private keys, which is kind of interesting, and I already have it all set up. Uh, so I'm going to hit submit. Now, I'm in a browser window on a Kali behind. This is actually in my, my line node environment, right? But I, I'm, I'm actually in a Kali box, MFA through Zero Trust. That's pretty amazing. You guys like that? You guys already seen that before? Like browser-based SSH? Works wonders. All right, so let's go to another one, okay? I want to, this is the one everyone freaks out on, is the VNC in the browser. They're working on getting, they're working on getting a uh, RDP, but it's not in the roadmap for this year. Yeah, and I, I bugged them about it. I were once RDP for some reason, right? Uh, I mean, it, it's Microsoft. So I'm going to stop sharing, grab that VNC password real quick. Thank you. All right, so uh, MCP, Linode, VNC, VNC, cancel. And we're going to go back to Zoom. 
share screen. Stop share. I'll put that password in there. And now I may not be that big, but I, I'm in a I'm absolutely in a VNC behind my firewall, right? Without using exposing it through the firewall, using Cloudflare SASE, multi-factor authentication. Amazing, right? Right? Amazing. All right. So let's go to the last example I'm gonna share. And this is just a website part of the firewall. And this is this isn't anything really to get excited over, but let me go grab my uh, I have a Vanessa scanner, right? So I'm gonna say open a new tab. Uh, this password I happen to know. So uh, here it is. I'm in a Nessus scanner, Nessus, Nessus.gosolis.com, right, as a C name. Uh, you guys can never get to it because it's behind Cloudflare SAS seed after the zero trust your way into there. So uh, this way, if people, you know, a lot of guys are doing stuff where you have to be, you know, this, this totally stops all the chaos. And I've got policies set up for all these where anybody on certain teams can get to this exactly on their dashboard. So uh, in a five minutes, let me kind of look this. So, developer and code security, uh, traditional DevOps. Uh, I'll blow this real quick. Uh, you know, we don't know where devs go all the time. I was a dev. We're crazy people. We're kind of unruly sometimes in the older generations, and we just we just do stuff, right? Uh, but we need full permission to our laptops. We always argue with network admins, but we don't know. You know, like we go places. We go places, and, and you know. Even when we go, we got things like Carbon Black and, and CrowdStrike on our laptops. It doesn't mean it's it's totally safe. The biggest thing today is kind of like on the uh, on the uh, like the adding into software and you know, the laptops or the uh, supply chain attacks, right? SolarWinds, LastPass, you know, all these are developer stuff. Uh, Lazarus, you guys hear about Lazarus? They actually did fake HR campaigns and they they took down a major crypto company by giving the developer was thought he was gonna get a job, right? And he was on his corporate laptop doing stuff for a job. They sent him a PDF file that was laced and they were able to compromise all the crypto keys for moving money through an exchange. So uh, important we lock these things down, right? Um, so Cloudflare Warp is what we, we use that for. Uh, you guys might have heard of 1.1.1.1, but so you stall on the device. Anyone here you already using Warp at all? <laughs> all right, so are you from Cloudflare? Did you, you guys sense one of my freeze up? All right, so th this works, and you can have policies based on these people, based on Azure AD groups that are specific for your developers, uh, and to see what they're doing, right, and where they're going. So, uh, you, again, just like the Cisco umbrella stuff, you can do a whole bunch of app code security. I'm running out of time, so I'm kind of running through this as fast as I can. Uh, this is the shadow IT discovery of where they're going. Right, and whether you want to prove them or not, and we can even do device posture checks before they hop on networks. Right, uh, very cool stuff. Works with a lot of different vendors. So, uh, real quick demo here. Uh, I just want to pull up the analytics screen for for Kate, uh, and let's let's uh, see what happens here. Really quick, Kate. Um, how do I get rid of uh, questions? Oop. Let's see and show. And then I go back to my web browser. And if we go back into the Cloudflare thing here, Kate, uh, if we go to analytics, this is where you see a lot of those, those things of where they're going. This is like the last five days or seven days, minus, minus, of like where people are going, right? Uh, and then we can see gateway data of DNS queries uh, with getting approved or denied. So we can set up good blocking categories for different groups of people. Right, and make sure we're doing a good job there. So, uh, there's more to go after here. Uh, I'll be here all week. No, I won't be. Go, good, sir. How do you handle federation and what do you do to secure customers? So, customers, you can federate them. I, I'll tell you, I am not the super network Google guy, right? So, I mean, I, I, would, I would federate them and I would do something with their usernames and passwords. I would probably have some kind of policy knowing if they're terminated or not on their side. You know, because Federation Sam will have some vulnerabilities to it, right? We all, we all know that. So you could allow just a specific email from a vendor and always make sure they have the authorized approver setting set so that someone has to authorize that person to come in every time. So 
uh, there's different methodologies to hit there. Yes, sir. No, no, sir, because the C names don't have origin IPs. Your A records would. There is no origin server. This is not a WoW. So it, it, there, there's truly no IP. They would, they, if they, there's no firewall there. Think of it this way. They have to get into the, the, the SAS E, the secure edge, to be able to get into it from there. And they, they're not going to get there. That's the benefit of the, of the secure edge through a, any SAS E provider, whether it's Cato, Cloudflare, whoever. Zscaler, whole nine yards. So they're, they're, I, I, you're, you're, what you're getting at is WAF bypass, which we test for ourselves usually once a year for our customers. And there's no WAF by this is not a WAF, this is zero trust. So, any more questions? Yes, ma'am. You guys work with Cloudflare? Are you from there? <laughs> I knew they'd send somebody to watch me. Gotcha. Well, um, I'll be, I'm, I'm available for lunch and drinks. So you guys are totally, it's on you. So actually I, I'm, I'm working on Cloudflare to be a sponsor for LastCon. Maybe you can help me evangelize that. That'd be really good. We have one more question in the room. Yeah, yeah, you Cloudflare need to be your DNS provider, right? So, you know, that that's for the zero trust web based access, they have to be your your provider, right? Otherwise, you can't, you know, they can't create the C names for you. So, Makes but sense. this home networks under 50 users, this is a great use case to start your journey for sure. All those teenagers and stuff. So, yes. <laughs> uh, anyways, we are about out of time here. Thank everyone. Thank Mark for doing this presentation. It was great. Up here and stop this. So, thank you all for attending, and hopefully, to see you all next month, the same time, same place.